Hello, God bless. It's me, Dick Jr. Uh, I'm coming to you today, uh, or now, to read uh, Jeremiah chapter 14. And uh, I'm going to put a brief disclaimer, IBC root beer. So if you see me drinking something out of a brown bottle, it's root beer. I drink this because it has pure cane sugar in it. It's not high fructose corn syrup. So this is my treat. I love root beer. I love root beer. Okay. So, uh, I've already prayed and asked God to help me to read to you today. Uh, I suggest that any time you place yourself in the Word that you pray as well and you ask God to help you understand. He promises He will. It's not my promise. It's His promise and it's in the Word. If you find it, then you'll, you'll know too. Okay, but I, I'm telling you it's in there and I just don't, uh, I don't have to go find it because I know it's in there. Um, the reference that we took was... Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. It only fits because of a word, apostasy. But also, as I read through this chapter, there are, I think, things that lean towards the end of times as well. You know, even though this is speaking specifically of a time and a place in history, uh, prophecy can apply to multiple things. Sometimes you'll find pieces of prophecy that go elsewhere. Not saying that's what I'm doing here. I'm just saying that it, it does apply. You know, it continues to apply. Prophecy does. Out of the word I'm talking about. These words, as you read through them, will continue to open up and open up and open up because they're prophecy and God is a living God. You see? So, I'm going to go ahead and start here in uh, chapter 14, verse 1. Um, that which came as the word of the Lord to Jeremiah in regard to the drought. So, God had dried everything up. Uh, not only had he brought in armies, but now he had dried everything up. Uh, Judah mourns and her gates languish. They sit on the ground in mourning and cry of Jerusalem. Uh, the, and the cry of Jerusalem has ascended. Their nobles have sent their servants for water. They have come to the cisterns and have found no water. They have returned with their vessels empty. I circled it where it says they have returned with their vessels empty because um, we are also considered vessels and we can be empty or full. You see what I mean? So um, as I read through this, I wonder if maybe this is not um, speaking of the, the, the prophets that are spoke of later in this chapter when it says that the nobles send their servants because obviously... These prophets were not God's servants, the ones that we're about to talk to, because if they were, God would be giving them the same prophecies that he gave to Jeremiah, and these things wouldn't be happening. But anyway, so they have returned with their vessels empty. So if they were false prophets and, you know, worshiping money and saying what people wanted to hear, then they would be returning from the house of God with an empty vessel. God wouldn't fill their vessel up for them to pour it out to others because they're not there for the right purposes. You see what I mean? Uh, or they're doing other things. This is a particular thing here, though. They have been put to shame and humiliated, They, and they cover their heads because the ground is cracked, for there has been no rain on the land. So when that happened, uh, people said they must have sinned. You see, that is how things worked out back then. For there has been no rain on the land. Okay, The farmers have been put to shame, and ha they have covered their heads. For even the doe in the field has given birth only to abandon her young because there is no grass. The wild donkeys stand on the bare heights. They pant for air like jackals. Their eyes fail, for there is no vegetation. So they're so thin, they're just up there panting and waiting to die, these wild animals are. Uh, Although our iniquities testify against us, O Lord, act for your name's sake. And this right here uh, is speaking of... of uh, Jerusalem being God's people, but um, as I go through here, I kind of feel like some of this could talk about Jesus, because it says, oh, hope of Israel. You know, Jesus is the hope of Israel. I'm sorry. I know God is as well, but Jesus is the hope of Israel. So is it when he says, oh, hope of Israel, who's, he's calling out to God, but you see what I mean? So, although our iniquities testify against us, O Lord, act for your name's sake, truly our apostasies have been many. We have sinned against you. And this is where I'm going to take the reference to think of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 4. 
But the reason I'm taking the reference is because, one, I had it wrote in here in pencil, which I do that occasionally. So I take those or look at them and see what they have to do with things. Uh, and the other thing is that the word apostasies is circled. Apostasies is basically turning away from God. You know what I mean? So the word apostasy is why I circled it, because I had seen it in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 through 4 now i'm going to go ahead and read through this fairly quick you'll hear the word and then we're going to kind of go back but this is speaking of uh latter days let's call it okay uh the man of lawlessness let's call it that okay um now we request you brethren with regard to the coming of our lord jesus christ and our gathering together to him that you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message, or a letter, as if from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. And when he says it, it's it's the apostasy, not, you know, you see what I mean? The apostasy, apostasy which is the whole world turning away from God. And as we walk into 2024 and look at the world, we continue to watch the world turn away from God. And that's, I'm not here to tell you whether it's right or wrong. I'm here to tell you for me, it's wrong. Okay. And that's up to you if you decide it's wrong. So anyway, that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm going to go on. Uh, Pastasy comes first. So this is talking about the, the end of times and the man of lawlessness, the man. Okay. Not, uh, not uh, 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 the Antichrist. This is talking about the beast, the uh, Satan, truth and truth. Um, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object or of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. And uh, a lot of churches believe that this is a literal thing, that, that it's this um, has to happen that he has to actually sit in the temple of God but I'm telling you that the temple of God is right here in our hearts okay and if he sits in that temple it's the same to God okay and that's what I'm telling you right here now we're going to go on back and, and, and uh, we'll continue to read uh, verse 8 O hope of Israel its savior in time of distress why are you like a stranger in the land or like a traveler who has pitched his tent for the night why are you like a man dismayed like a mighty man who cannot save and you are in our midst O lord yet you are in our midst O lord sorry and we are called by your name uh, do not forsake us thus says the lord to this people even so even so they have loved to wander and he's not talking about um going here and going there and going everywhere what he's talking about is stepping off the path that god has set for us wandering off the path the way okay um the lord had loved to wander they have not kept their feet in check therefore the lord does not accept them so what he's saying right here is if and this is purely on you and between you and God but what, what he's saying is if your feet are not on the path okay, uh, he's not going to accept us that's kind of the, what it comes down to as he's become, going through here and I'm not going to pull the punches now he will remember their iniquity and call their sins to account so the Lord said to me do not pray for the welfare of this people so God's telling him stop praying for them Jeremiah because you know they deserve what they get uh, when they fast, I am not going to listen to their cry. And when they offer burnt offerings and grain offerings, I am not going to accept them. Rather, I am going to make an end of them by the sword, famine, and pestilence. And I circled that right there, sword, famine, and pestilence, because this comes up continually throughout Jeremiah. And I'm just going to put this out there one time. In Revelation, the, the four horsemen are... Uh, they're these sword famine and pestilence and and uh, uh conquering conquering okay so 
these four things that God's setting upon them in if I go back to other scriptures are the very same four things that we read about in uh, the book of Revelation so I'm just going to make a small correlation that's just me you don't have to um, necessarily put it that way and I don't care to argue about it but uh, I know that uh, when you read it and, 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 and you read those seals and those four horsemen one is to conquer the spirit to conquer and conquering okay the other is the sword famine and pestilence all those boom 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 okay and but uh but so verse 13 but i lord god i said look the prophets are telling them you will not see the sword nor will you have famine but i will give you lasting peace in this place and this is something that we see even today and god never promised us peace until he comes back this place is never going to be perfect and that's what he says there's not going to be a time when we can get it together because we can't be trusted human beings can't be trusted there is no one human being or any group of human beings that can be trusted to be put over the other human beings and tell us what to do or you know it's just it's it, it can't be done there, there's always going to be some sin and iniquity in there and self-serving and you know greed and it's just the truth god love us but we're sick okay verse 14 then the lord said to me the prophets are prophesying falsehood in my name i have neither sent them nor commanded them okay nor spoken to them so god makes sure he doesn't just say they're not my prophets they're not speaking my words he made sure boom 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 you hear me i didn't send them i didn't speak to him and uh, uh i didn't command him specifically they are prophesying to you a false vision of divination futility and deception of their own minds therefore thus says the lord concerning the prophets who are prophesying in my name although it was not i who sent them yet they keep saying there will be no sword or famine in this land by sword famine by sword and famine those prophets will meet their end the people also to whom they are prophesying will be thrown out into the streets of jerusalem because of the famine and the sword and there will be no one to bury them neither them nor their wives nor their sons nor their daughters for i will pour out their own wickedness on them and you will say this word to them and i'm gonna pause right there but this he's talking about jerusalem and judah he's talking about his very own people he's pouring this wickedness out on that's what i'm saying here so don't think that any one country or any one nation is any better than this because these are his chosen people and god was willing to turn on okay so i'm gonna go ahead and keep reading let my eyes flow down with tears night and day and let them not cease for the virgin daughter of my people who has been crushed with a mighty blow with a sorely infected wound and uh, uh that wound is is uh, the idols and uh, the uh false worship uh, they were taking they were doing uh, and and also things that Jesus complains about later or tells them about later but you know not not being kind to people basically you know the religious and the church uh, if I go out of, to the country behold those slain with the sword or if I enter the city behold diseases of famine uh, for both prophet and priest have gone roving about in a land that they do not know so uh you know here he's saying the sword is one place and the famine is in another so they're not together uh, have you completely rejected judah judah or have you loathed zion and zion is his city in heaven and it exists in our hearts and hopes why have you stricken us so that we are beyond healing we waited for peace but nothing good came because god didn't say so you see what i mean this is what the people is like a um hypothetical conversation um, and for a time of healing but behold terror we know our wickedness O lord the iniquity of our fathers for we have sinned against you do not despise us for your own name's sake do not disgrace the throne of your glory remember and do not annul your covenant with us are there any among the idols or the nations who give rain or can the heavens grant showers 
Is it not you, O Lord, our God? Therefore, we hope in you, for you are the one who has done all these things. And uh, again, I kind of like the way that he says this, but are there any among idols of the nations who give rain? You know, I mean, Jeremiah says they're not getting rain for this reason. And the reason is because they're praying to other idols. And right here he's telling you to, to, to go to one of those idols then, you know, if they're so powerful. And uh, so that's Jeremiah chapter 14. And uh, thanks for letting me read to you. And thanks for listening. And uh, I'll be back in a little bit with some more. Uh, I'm trying to put down a few chapters a day. So uh, just not a lot, but a few. Uh, so God bless and thanks for listening.